On this week's show, our contestants will do a project that country folk and city folk alike can agree on. After a hard job, a tough chore, or a week of nothing but work, what better way to cut loose and have some fun with friends than throwing a party? But this is tough grit, so it's no wine and cheese tasting here. No siree, it's a hog roast, an ice cream churning, guitar playing, boot scooting barn party. We've got two contestants to help us prepare to celebrate hoedown style on this week's episode of Tough Grit. Hey there, Shannon, what's happening? Hey, Caleb, my young friend. Now look, I know you're used to me being totally organized for every one of our episodes, you know, mainly due to my vast intellect and my charming personality, but I might be a little overwhelmed for today's episode. Not you. I know, it's hard to believe. It's just that I'm trying to plan the perfect barn party and, well, I just need a little help with some of the things that we're gonna use, like, for instance, any food or dessert or if there's going to be entertainment. Well, you happen to be in luck, because today's episode is all about preparing and roasting a pig over a pit and preparing delicious homemade ice cream. Excellent, great. OK, and we'll need to make a lot of food. How many people did you invite? Well, not a lot. Just, you know, anyone who's on the crew and any of the past experts and any of the contestants and all the neighbors around here and uh, anyone who lives in this county. Well, I think we can handle it. Great. And we've got to get it done right away. Why is that? Because the party's tonight. Of course it is. Maybe you've always wanted to move beyond the charcoal grill or the gas grill to roasting a pig over a pit. Or you've been searching for that delicious homemade ice cream recipe that'll quench all your summer cravings. Or maybe you want to plan the perfect barn party, but it's just a little bit out of your control. When it comes to planning a party for your family and friends, we've all found ourselves in a big pile of tough grit. And that's where we come in. I'm Caleb Regan. And I'm Shannon Riley. Making your hoedown or barn party a big success with all of your guests while still being fun for you can be a big job. But we're here to help you get that job done right. We'll give you the tools, techniques, and tips to give you all the celebrating know-how you need. And we've got a couple of neighbors here ready to take on some country-style party preparation challenges. Let's meet today's contestants. Our first contestant is Jason Tyson from Osage City, Kansas. Jason graduated from Emporia State University with a bachelor's degree in Parks and Recreation. He works for Southern Star Central Gas Pipeline and enjoys being outdoors working, hunting, and fishing. Jason and his wife have three kids and 19 acres. Jason loves the rural lifestyle so much that he took a photography just so he could learn how to crop pictures. Contestant two is J.T. Crawford from Redding, Kansas. He and his wife are teachers and live and manage a 240-acre farmstead. At the end of every summer, they throw a party at their farm where J.T. does a fish fry and everybody brings their garden harvest. He even does a little bluegrass picking. J.T. told me earlier that he's just so excited to be here today that the thrill of competing in today's contest is enough. Finally, a contestant we don't need to buy lunch. Welcome, gentlemen, to Tough Grit. And now you find out the project for which you two were invited to be here today. Get ready to RSVP for these Tough Grit Challenges. Building a hog roasting pit and churning homemade ice cream for a barn party. For the first challenge, the contestants will dig an appropriate sized hole by hand. Then they'll line that hole with cinder blocks and place charcoal in the middle. Finally, they'll get the fire started. The second challenge is making the summertime favorite homemade ice cream. Contestants will churn by hand until the ice cream is ready. But don't worry if this project seems like an overwhelming culinary conquest. We have two experts here to help you conquer it with confidence. Our first expert is the cookout king himself, Hank Will, editor-in-chief of Grit Magazine. Hank's got a look on his face that says he's come here to win. Either that or it's indigestion. Regardless, I'm staying out of his way. And from Cookville, Tennessee, meet our friendly tractor supply company store manager, Angie Glasscock. She's a serious shoe-in. Who better to help prepare food for a hoedown than someone who comes from a place called Cookville? These experts will help you take on your challenges today and stick to our three criteria of accuracy, efficiency, and safety so that you can go home with up to a $1,000 gift card to Tractor Supply Company. Wow, now that's motivation. That ought to put hustle in your bustle and scoot in your boots. Wow, I might actually pull off this barn party today. 
We'll also be using some great products today like shovels, a hand crank or electric powered ice cream churn, and a roasting spit made by Nathan Lindsay, a former contestant on our welding episode. Our contestants are getting ready to pig out, but before we do that, let's go to our experts for some roasting rules and some pig preparation pitfalls to avoid. Now why do we dig a pit? JT, you don't have to dig a pit. However, it's much more efficient. It keeps the heat centered so it doesn't escape. It just makes it much more efficient when cooking your pig. Jason, you can dig the pit as deep as you'd like. Commercial roasters are usually just a couple of inches deep. Uh, the deeper you dig the pit, the more efficient it will be. It's gonna push more heat up and around your pig, but it's also much easier to overcook or burn the pig that way. So how deep are we digging this pit? We're gonna dig these out to 18 inches or so today, and then we're gonna surround the pit with some cinder blocks to raise the level some and I think that should work fine. Starting your charcoal ahead of time and letting it burn for a while, it's kind of like preheating your oven. It's going to reflect the heat back from the walls onto your hog. So you can use a smaller fire? Oh, absolutely. And you won't burn the outside and the inside will be cooked correctly. Jason, a chimney starter can be really useful for lighting charcoal that's not self-lighting. It's better, it's better when you're cooking a pig than using a, a lighter fluid because the fumes can get on the animal and, and give it an off flavor. I'm going to go ahead and lay out the charcoal light it and let the fumes burn away before we actually put the animal on. You want to add probably about 10 pounds of charcoal an hour and ideally you want that charcoal to be lit. If it's not lit you definitely want to be sure that, that you're spreading non-self lighting charcoal on the pile or you'll get that fumy flavor on the meat. I heard some people wrap up the hog and bury it underground. Oh sure, some folks do that. What it does is the ground it holds the heat and it roasts the pork perfectly, but it, unfortunately it takes a really long time. So we're going to use a much faster method today. It's above ground, it's on a spit, you can rent one, buy one, and we're going to use a homemade method today. All right, and now we're going to make our pits and get ready to set our spits. Challenge number one is creating the roasting pit for our hogs. For this challenge, Jason and JT will each dig a hole, line it with cinder blocks, place their charcoal, and light a fire. It's all about working efficiently. Whoever gets their pit finished first and gets their charcoal burning wins. That's true, but you also want to do the job right. The holes must be dug to the right depth, the cinder blocks must be placed correctly, and the charcoal must be placed and lit safely. Any cutting corners will make you stop and fix it. So work smart, work fast, and work safely. Good luck, gentlemen. Ready, set, go. All right, how's it going, Al? It looks good, yeah, dig it straight across. Hey, 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 hey. Go behind me. <laughs> They're already slinging dirt. Yeah, keep it away from my cinder Looks like JT's digging his perimeter first. You're doing great. Jason's clearing it out row by row as he goes. No, you're doing really well. Yeah, you've got about another shovel length here and get it all cleared out and I think we should be okay. Oh, yeah. Not a ton of strategy to it, just good old fashioned hard work. Uh, they do have to remember to keep going down. I think once we get this cleared out, we're in good shape. Well, Caleb, I hope Jason and JT hurry up with those pits. There's a lot to do before the guests start arriving for our barn party. Uh, they're not going anywhere until one of them wins this challenge. Mm -hmm. And don't you go anywhere, because right after this, we're gonna figure out who wins our pig pit preparation right here on Tough Grit. When it comes to grilling, using ready-made charcoal is convenient, but nothing beats the mouth-watering campfire flavor created when you use chunked wood as your fuel instead. And the best part of all is that the wood chunks are free for the making from windfall branches or prunings from around your place. Here's how it works. First, you need to collect branches, limbs, and or trunks of species such as pear, apple, hickory, maple, or any other wood that has pleasant smoky flavor. Cut the branches into four to five inch lengths and split or saw heavier material into three inch chunks. Let your grilling wood cure in a well-ventilated dry place until it is easy to ignite and doesn't steam and hiss while burning. I've had good luck storing the stuff in burlap sacks hanging from the wall in my barn. When you are ready to grill, load the chunks into a chimney style charcoal lighter and light as usual. When the chunks are well lit, spread them on the charcoal grate in the grill, reduce the airflow by closing the lid until the flames snuff and the chunks smolder. The rest is as easy as adding the food, adjusting the airflow to maintain sufficient heat, and digging into the best grilled steaks and chops you've ever experienced. Give it a try and discover for yourself that the little bit of added effort is well worth the reward. Welcome back. Our contestants are busy digging our hog roasting pits, getting ready for our barn party. Team Grit and Team Track Supply are both finishing up their holes and placing their cinder blocks. Then they'll place their charcoal and start a fire. 
I was checking out the competition. I, I don't think he's wide enough. We see a couple of these blocks. We're gonna have to go a lot wider than that. Check it out. They're not wide enough. They're not wide enough. You're doing great. We gotta make these pits good and big. We didn't get any little piggies. <laughs> I feel like I'm digging my own grave. Oh, you're taller than that. <laughs> I think I took work off for this. JT's having a real block party. I said jump on that baby. Nice. Jason's putting his second layer of cinder blocks in. Do it this way, correct? Alternating cinder blocks for a stronger structure. Here? Yes. Right there. Perfect. Build it just like a stack of hay. Don't ask me, I can't even do a Ruby's cube. I can barely do an ice cube. And I think we could backfill for a little bit. Jason's got one layer to go. Well, I'm gonna backfill. Looks pretty sturdy. Jason's got his pit backfilled and he's just placing that last layer of cinder blocks. He's being quite a perfectionist about it. I think he's gonna put in a porch and a sunroom. Oh, don't get that. Jason's to the point of putting his charcoal into the pit. JT's finishing up that last layer of cinder blocks. This is number four. Five more blocks. Seven. Now I just gotta backfill and throw in some. Yeah, oh yeah, we're gonna do a little backfill. Eight. All around the side. That's nine. That's 10. Go get it back. JT's all done backfilling. Headed for the charcoal. 10 bags. Good? Yeah, I think that's good. And then uh, give it a light. Yeah, four. Oh, and you, you got one piece of charcoal. Oh, we don't want to get docked for that. <laughs> there we go. Four. Heads up. And we got fire over oh, here. We That's got it. fire. Great Love job, me. everybody. Come on in. These are super pits. Good job, buddy. Good but job. But I think we have a winner, eh, Caleb? I think we ended up with two pits that are ready for a couple of pigs. You guys both did a good mm -hmm. job. Jason, you just did it a little quicker time. You just won yourself a $500 gift card to Tractor Supply Company. Congratulations, Jason. What are you going to get with your winnings? I'm going to put it towards your log splitter. Oh, that sounds like a great plan. Now, I'd say your pit is well done, but I like my pork medium well. <laughs> Shannon, you feel a little better about this barn party? A little, but I'll feel a lot better when I see those piggies sporting apples in their mouths. <laughs> well, that's coming up. Stay with us, because we're about to learn how to get our pigs ready for roasting right here on Tough Grit. Welcome back, folks. We have our experts, Hank and Angie, here to help our contestants get their pigs on the spit. I can smell that sweet pork aroma now. Or is that Hank's aftershave? If your pig has the skin on, you would start by washing it, paying particular attention to the ears, the snout, and the feet. Our pig has been skinned. So we can skip that step. Jason, when you're using a rotisserie to cook your hog, one of the hardest or the most difficult pieces of the process is to actually get the pig attached to the spit. As you can see, the spit's you know fairly skinny and spindly, and what you want to do is you got to get that hog clamped to it so that when you rotate it, the pig spins with it instead of just having it slide on the inside. How come we're putting this clamp on the inside of the rib cage? You know, on many on many chunks of meat, you'd actually clamp clamp the animal from both ends on the outside, but the, with the size of this pig. I think we'll have better luck keeping it from spinning if we put this clamp inside the rib cage, wire his legs together, and uh, I think it'll work. Okay. We, we've used four locations uh, right in the proximity of the clamps. You want to be sure that the pig itself, before you tighten everything down, is centered more or less on the spit because you want it to be over the flame. So let's go give it a try. Angie, how come you always see pictures of pigs with uh, apples sticking out of their mouth? The apples actually used to, to hold the mouth open so that proper heat flows through the pig as it cooks. Uh, you, you don't have to use an apple, you can use a piece of wood. Actually, the spit is gonna hold our pig's mouth open the whole okay. time, so we don't have to use the apple at all this time. Jason, ideally you wanna try to manage the coal bed so that the hot coals are pushed up against the edges of the pit. That way, uh, any of the fat drippings or whatnot from the pig will drop down in the middle. You'll have less problems with flaring up, but you're always gonna have some flare up, so you should keep some water handy. What temperature are we shooting for? Well, we'd like to have the air temperature that's passing the pig to be, you know, around 225 degrees or so. And we want to get the pig up to 170 degrees internal temperature. Measure that with a probe thermometer like this. 
Well, now he's cooking. We just gotta watch him make sure he doesn't cook too fast. If the skin gets black or starts crackling, we know he's cooking too fast. What do we do if it is cooking too fast? Well, we have three options. The first thing we can do is simply move the, the pig higher. The second thing we could do is remove some coals from the fire. Or the third thing is to move some coals from the center up to the sides. You should count on at least six to eight hours to cook an average size hog. A good rule of thumb is an hour and 15 minutes for every 10 pounds of pig that's on the spit. And you want to be sure to keep the spit turning to cook the hog evenly. You know, I would recommend anywhere from a quarter of a turn every 10 to 15 minutes. Well, the pigs are roasting and I'm ready to start boasting. This is going to be a great hoedown. Now, all we need is some dessert. Got you covered again, Shannon. We have on hand a recipe for homemade ice cream from the pages of Grit Magazine. Wow. And our two contestants, Jason and JT, are all set to do some churning. So why do you have to do all that churning? I mean, that's not for me. It's in case anybody out there doesn't know. Sure. The key to making homemade ice cream is to keep it creamy as it freezes. If you just put it in a bowl and throw it in the freezer, you'll end up with a big watery brick. Churning as it freezes will keep your ice cream from becoming an ice cube. Right. Now this is basically a simple challenge. Whoever can churn their ice cream to a consistency to stand up to Caleb's upside down ice cream scoop test wins. If neither of the ice creams are a desired consistency at the end of 45 minutes, it'll be whoever's is the thickest. Good luck to you both. Ready, set, go. The ingredients for the homemade ice cream is pre-made and in those gallon jugs. It should take it all. Well, it's going to get it all one way or another. That's perfect. Oh, gosh, okay, grab some ice. Oh, here, you got to get the lid. I get a good layer in there. And, yeah, shove some salt in there now. In goes the salt. JT's got his ice cream maker together. Had a little trouble and with it. And ice now. All that ice and salt. Did anyone bring margarita mix? And now... Let's get a good layer of salt in there. Oh, ready? Jason's the first one to start churning. And now it's time to take that milk for a spin. Perfect. Start churning. I keep expecting a clown to pop out of the top. I would pace myself. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back with the winner of our ice cream churning challenge. And we'll get this hoedown barn party started right here on Tough Grit. question when roasting a pig is how do I know when it's done? A meat thermometer will help you read the temperature inside the pig. Just place one in the thickest part of the meat to ensure that it's cooked thoroughly. Be careful not to touch the bone though because it will throw off the reading. Once the pig is done, it can be pulled off the spit. Let it rest for 20 minutes or so. When getting ready to carve or pull the pig, a large table is helpful along with tongs and knives. This is ideally a two-person job. When carving, one method is to start on one side, remove and carve the pork shoulder and the front leg, then remove the back leg and carve the meat. The skin should peel right off, or you can remove it ahead of time. Then take the back meat and the pork loins, which is your prime cuts. Next, cut the bacon or pork belly, and then the back shoulder meat and the back jowl meat. Finally, remove the spare ribs. Turn it over and follow this order for the other side. If you choose to pull the pork, you will need two pairs of heat resistant gloves to protect you and your friend while you prep the pork. One person will hold while the other person cuts and pulls. After slow roasting, the meat should literally fall off the bone and be ready to eat and serve with your favorite barbecue sauce. Both contestants have been churning away at our homemade ice cream challenge, and we have enough to share with all of our friends. Not anymore, I got hungry. <laughs> but I'm very excited because all of the guests are here, the pigs are done, and we have County Road 5 here to play. Huh? Aren't you forgetting something? 
Oh, that's right. Did you bring beverages? Oh. oh, the ice cream challenge. Of course, yes. We have to select the winner for the ice cream challenge. Caleb, who's it going to be? Congratulations goes to JT. You just won yourself a $500 oh, yeah. gift card to Tractor Supply Company. Congratulations, JT. To what do you owe the success of winning the ice cream challenge? Well, it was a cold day, and uh, the harder I worked, the warmer I got. But uh, honestly, I think I just had uh, more stamina than this young man over here. All right. Well, Jason, you won the earlier challenge, building the pit that cooked that delicious pig. You also win a $500 gift card from Tractor Supply Company. Did you have a good time? I had a great time. Thank you. Excellent. Now, let's get this party started. And let's get this party started with County Road 5! Thanks for being with us. We hope you've learned everything you need to know about roasting a pig and churning homemade ice cream. And if you'd like to learn more or you'd like the recipe we used today, visit toughgrit.com. Hey, Caleb, thanks for helping me out. This pork is perfecto. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I'm always thankful to help a friend out of a tough situation. Well, thank you. And it looks like everybody's having a great time at our barn party. And County Road 5 is wonderful. Yeah, sure. But next time, let's do a little planning before we send out all those invites. Absolutely. I promise. What are you doing next weekend? I'm Caleb Regan. And I'm Shannon Riley. And when you see us coming, you know you're in a big pile of tough, tough grit. It's always been this way, it ain't gonna change. Cause this is how we live. It's the American way. I said this is how we live.